Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So the GoPro Quick App got an update yesterday and they added a really interesting new feature. What they've done is added a new lens tool that allows you to change your field of view after recording. Now the only caveat to that is it has to be footage filmed on either the Hero 11 Black or the Hero 11 Black Mini. So let's just go ahead here, we'll take a look at the release notes. You can see the version is now 11.5 and under the release notes you can see that they've added a new lens tool. The lens tool lets you change the digital lens after recording. So to me that's a really important new feature because one thing I really liked about the Insta360 cameras was the ability to change your field of view after recording. You didn't have to really commit to it out in the field. You could just grab your shot and then set your field of view later on while editing. The other thing you can see that they've added is a new horizon leveling feature. Basically, you can lock the horizon even if you're just filming in regular wide field of view. And uh, we'll take a look at that here coming up. So I've got the GoPro app opened up here in front of me on my iPad. Of course, this will work on an iPhone or an Android device as well. So let's go over to our media. We'll bring up some samples here. So this first clip that I'm going to show you was filmed in a wide field of view. So I captured it on the Hero 11 Black. Let's go to our editing tools. So what you're going to notice right away, down here at the bottom we have this new lens tool. Now we can click on that and it's going to give us some new options. You can see by default it has wide selected because that's what we filmed it in. But it gives us a couple other options here. It says super view, hyper view, and linear. Now you're going to notice that super view and hyper view are grayed out. We can't select them. They've got that little not available sign. And that's because whatever field of view you film in, you can go under. You just can't go up. But I do have something that I filmed in hyper view that we'll take a look at here in a minute as well. So as you can see here, we can select linear. And that's going to change the field of view to linear. We can go back and forth. You can see when we do select linear, it is going to crop in a little bit, but it's going to get rid of most of the distortion. And as mentioned here, we can turn on horizon lock, and that's going to basically lock your horizon. But not only will it lock the horizon, it will lock it in a full 360 degrees. So there we go there. We've locked the horizon, and uh, we've got it now in linear. So that's actually really interesting. But let's get out of there. We'll go back to our gallery here. Uh, this clip here is actually filmed in the new Hyperview. So that gives you an extremely wide field of view. Basically, it takes the new 8 by 7 aspect ratio and just squishes it down so you're using the full sensor. The thing about using it is that you do get quite a bit of distortion. But what is really interesting here, even though they've squished it down, all that data is still preserved and they're able to restretch it back out. And I'll show you that here. So let's click on the Edit button and we'll go to our digital lenses. Now what you're going to notice here, because it was filmed in Hyperview, every other lens below that is available. So I can go to super view or I can go to wide or I can go to linear. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference there if we go from hyperview all the way down to linear. But what's really interesting here is I don't know if you can see that on film but right around the whole parameter you can see the whole aspect ratio. So you can see the software has taken that 8 by 7 and put it back to the proper aspect. And what's really nice about that is we can change the crop. Normally if you were just going to film in a wide field of view, basically what GoPro does, the camera does in the background, it captures that whole area and then just puts a crop over top, but you don't get to choose where that crop is. But doing it this way, as you can see here, we can change where that crop, the 16 by 9 crop is. And that can be really beneficial because you can see a standard crop. We have the handlebars in the middle, but it doesn't show much of the horizon or the sky. But doing it this way, as you can see, we can pull it down. Now we can see the horizon and the sky in there. So very beneficial and very useful. Of course, we could lock the horizon again. Or if you just have a slight adjustment you want to make, you can do it manually right there just by turning that dial. So some pretty interesting new tools. Now I want to take a look. I'm going to show you how the horizon lock works. I filmed this this morning just so I could do a demonstration. Now if we play the clip, you can see there I'm spinning the GoPro. And that's what your footage would look like. This was filmed just in a wide field of view. And you can see if the camera goes upside down, the whole image is going to go upside down. But we can now go into the edit tool, go to our lenses, and what you can see here is we can lock the horizon. Now, as you can see there, it's going to crop in quite a bit because it has to be able to uh, work with it to keep it level. But as you can see, this clip here does not spin around anymore. Now, this isn't going to be great for every situation just because of the tight crop. 
But in some situations, it's a handy tool to have in case you do need to lock that horizon for whatever you're filming. Now, of course, we can do that directly on the GoPro if we use the linear plus horizon lock. But the thing is, again, you have to be committed to that. Once you've filmed in that, that's what you have. Doing it this way in the app, you can film in a wide field of view. But if there's a couple clips, a couple spots where you do want to lock the horizon, you can do so just at those spots. Now, lastly, before I go here quickly, I want to show you how if you're filming in that hyperview where you're making full use of that sensor, if we go to, again to our edit section, we'll go to our lenses, we'll put it to a wide field of view. Again, you can see now it's cropped there in the middle. It's restretched it back out. The nice thing about that aspect is if you record a lot for different media platforms such as YouTube, TikTok, Instagram Reels, your aspect ratio is going to be different for every platform. Obviously for YouTube, you're going to want a 16 by 9 but things like Instagram Reels or TikTok, you're gonna want a nine by 16. And having that eight by seven aspect ratio allows you to retain the most amount of data. So I'll just show you that here. If we go to our fit, we can set it to a nine by 16. As you can see, it's just changed the crop. We can then go and export it in this version, go back to a 16 by nine, export it as that version. So the nice thing about that is you can film one clip, but with the tools that are provided, you can export it in different formats for different platforms. That saves a little bit of work having to film something twice if you need a 16x9 and a 9x16. Well folks, that's basically it for this video. Just taking a look at the new update for the GoPro Quick App and some of the new tools that they've added. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did, it's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.